Okay, so welcome back to this next video on uh, transformations of random variables. Okay, so uh, we've discussed now uh, these functions which map uh, the real line onto the real line and these two conditions that we are going to insist on. Now what we want to do is here we have a, real, a, a set of real numbers. We are now going to act this function g on this set of real numbers. So basically, it is going to map every real number in there onto another real number. So let's say x is going to go to g of x. So just like here, you're going to take your value of x, you're going to map it onto some g of x. So basically, you're going to take every real number here, and you're going to map it onto a new real number in here. And again, you want this to inherit the probability space structure of this one. Uh, so uh, you want uh, the uh, probability of, uh, you want any event in here to have a corresponding event back here. And um, you want the probability of the event in this probability space to be the same as the probability uh, of the corresponding event back here. And basically, uh, this property here that we insisted on, this uh, g is strictly increasing, is very, very nice. Uh, the reason is that uh, it's going to ensure us, it's going to ensure us that uh, the function is um, uh, is one to one basically that it's injective that every single point in the real line here is going to be ascribed a single an ind oh well, it's going to be ascribed a single but it's going to be ascribed a unique um, I don't know if I'm saying it right uh, it's going to be ascribed its own real number in here so basically what I'm saying is that if you have some x which is mapped onto g of x in uh, here basically there will be no other let's say there will be no y in here which is mapped onto that same g of x, basically. And the reason is that if you have another y, uh, then y will be somewhere else on this real that line. So if y is over here, then y will be less than x, which will imply that y has to be given a different number to x because of the fact that this function was strictly increasing. Because if y is less than x, then the value of uh, g of y has to be strictly less than the value of g of x, basically. So that implies that y's value cannot equal the same value as g of x. So basically, what I'm saying is that because we've insisted on that condition there, uh, we are given the fact that every real number in here will be ascribed a unique real number in here. And no other real number will be ascribed that same real number, basically. What we cannot guarantee uh, from these conditions is that the function is onto. And what I mean by that is if we get, if I give an example in terms of um, in terms of the exponential. So if we have uh, let's say the exponential function here. That is a perfectly good, strictly increasing function. So this is uh, g uh, is mapping the real line onto the real line, and specifically g is going to map a little value x onto the exponential uh, of that value x. Okay, so it's ascribing every real number the exponential of that real number. Okay, uh, but this this is a perfectly good, strictly increasing function. If I take uh, any little value, little x. And then I go to some x prime, which is greater than little x. Uh, then the value of g of x is bigger than the value. Uh, sorry, the value of g of x prime is bigger than the value of g of x. So it's strictly increasing. It's infinitely differentiable. So it's certainly differentiable. Uh, so this perfectly well satisfies our conditions. What I mean by the fact that it isn't onto is that uh, this is basically it's going to map it. We this statement is a little bit uh, incorrect, really, because you are mapping your you are mapping the real numbers onto the real numbers, but you are not mapping it onto the whole real numbers. You're actually mapping it onto the strictly positive real numbers. So we could have put r plus there. No real number along here is ascribed a negative real number, or it's neither is it ascribed the real number zero. So you are not mapping it onto the whole of the real numbers. So basically what I mean is I, if I take negative 1 down here, there is no real number uh, that is ascribed uh, that is ascribed the value uh, negative 1 by this function. Uh, so uh, it has no inverse. Minus 1, uh, if you... If you have the inverse function of e to the x, which is the natural logarithm, uh, then you cannot define what the natural logarithm of negative 1 is, basically. Uh, so, um, well, you can, but in, in the complex numbers you can def define that, but uh, in the real numbers you can't. Okay, so we'll continue this discussion in the next video.